they removed that from the quarry, just placed it, placed this thing here, and carved those um, those steps. Probably the level of the ground was about here in those days. For some reason now it's lower, lower, and we can see a little bit of the um, wall of the palace itself and next to it connected a piece of the Hashmonai family wall surrounding Jerusalem. But down here, look at that. This bell. And there is another exposed section much more impressed be in the Jewish quarter, will be in the Jewish quarter, not today, but Tuesday, and you'll see the white wall of King Hezekiah protecting the city. And here was another gate from the palace of King Herod. And Jesus is walking from here with a beam, and his arms are on that beam, and when he gets to the place of crucifixion, of course, they're going to take the other beam. They're going to line down, connect these, and of course, then it's going to be erected. And of course, uh, they put a crown on him. Now, in, in, in a lot of modern icons, you'll see a crown that is only surrounding the head. It's not right. Actually, the crown was weaved also above the head, like a helmet, so they can stick it there, and it's going to be very painful for the person if somebody's going to try and pull it out. So it's going to stay there, and that's it. And this is why in ancient icons, always, this information, how the crown looked like, was lost, but always, but they still remember there was a drop of blood coming from here, from the top. Very ancient icons. This, this is the reason. And Simon Gibson, the archaeologist, Simon, Simon Gibson, Simon Gibson. You will find a lot of material on YouTube concerning this. And behind you, another older gate of the city. They still not sure which period of time can be 10th century BC or 7th century BC, that would make it uh, King Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, into the city. You see, again, the, the, the city protected by walls was always wobbling around, a little bit to the east, a little bit to the west, a little bit to the north, a little bit to the south, and so on. This is why the layout, if you're going to see one map with all, like my map, with all the lines of, this, of the walls of the city, all kinds, you can see wah, so many lines there because it moves all the time. You know, one thing, guys, just just to remember, I think many of you know this already, but do you remember that the walls of the city of Jerusalem, it was absolutely destroyed. Okay, not just once, but many times this has happened, and so you can kind of see the difficulty of understanding things and so just kind of keep that in mind that um, it's not as black and white as it seems sometimes when you uh, see pictures back home and it seems oh I get it this is the gate that this happened this is the gate and it's not that simple and uh, so just kind of keep that in mind you have to realize that you're seeing portions of Hezekiah portions from Herod and so on it isn't this um, and so while we're in the spot no question Jerusalem and the old city and all of that there's a lot of puzzle pieces so this Absolutely. is helpful to kind of put some of those pieces together so um, what else do we have yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah this is it and it's not a popular place to take people because it's not alluring and uh, seductive like the traditional Via Dolorosa of the Byzantines and then adopted 
uh, by the Franciscan order in the 14th century because of political reasons. If I'm looking at the map of Jerusalem, old city of today, I'm going to see the route is actually making sure it's not excluding, excluding the houses of the Muslims. So always there is a Christian church presence in, in the city. So it's more like a political route. And also the more stations you're going to have, the more places. And, and you know, uh, in the traditional one, there are 14 stations. When we read the Gospels, there are eight or nine events during the cross. That's it. The rest are made up traditions to make more, to give more meat to the pilgrims. He comes down from Italy. He paid a lot of money for it. If you are not providing him a lot of meat, just hey, this is you see this, this is it, and he went that way. He's gonna say, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> right? But this is it. And imagine after the flogging. Just going a third of a mile was a challenge because doing the route of a mile, okay, inside the city uphill makes no sense. Impossible. Impossible. Jesus was very, he was solid built properly. He was very strong. He would have been a UFC fighter, maybe a champion after the Roman flogging because the Hebrew flogging is 40 minus 1, 39, just, it's 40 minus 1, just one less to give a little bit compassion. The Roman was a punishment not only for the guy that was flogged, but also for the soldier. He didn't do his bed right. Now you take the whip, okay, it has many strings, at the end of them, a little bit of nails and, and shrapnels, of a, like a pieces of stone tied to the ends and, and and then you're gonna whip the person until you're so devastated your hand cannot hold the whip anymore so we are talking about anything between 100 to 300 lashes most people pass out after 50 after 100 most of them are dead in Roman flogging so you can imagine how strong he was just to make it to the cross. Because on the cross, he's got one more duty. He's going to preach. He's going to preach Psalms 22. Psalms 22. And if I'm reading Psalms 22, you got it? I can get it, yeah. Please. <clears throat> one thing too, guys, I want you to understand. Uh, the last group that I took, I did not even bring to the Via Della Rosa. I, I can guarantee you the Via Della Rosa is just a Catholic thing, okay? And so this is just kind of a a little bit to show you. We're not, we're, we're still taking you to the garden too. What we're saying is, is this Via Della Rosa? I told him, yeah, I'm not interested in the Via Della Rosa. And he said, well, can I show you what I think maybe is the real thing and based on archeology? span But like he said, it doesn't fit the norm. Nobody wants to come and see what might be the real thing. They want to see what tradition tells them. And uh, like I said, I didn't even take the last group to the Via Della Rosa because I know it's not it. It's that simple. All right, Psalm 22, it says this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sound familiar? Again, Yeshua is always taking you back to the Old Testament. Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Just mocking, and you can just see, if this is the spot, Jesus being beaten and, and being walked out this direction. 
Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Now this is kind of leaders, basically, is what oftentimes the, the bulls of Bashan and whatnot are. Roaring lions tearing their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am proud, or poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of the death, dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men have encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O oh Lord, be not far off. O oh, my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lion. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You know what I love about that? Well, this isn't the part that I love, but you can just see as he hung on the cross. Is, you know, you think sleeping on a bad bed is bad. <laughs> uh, his bones are out of joint. His mouth is dried up like a pot shirt. I mean, you can just see the, the dehydration. His, his heart has turned to wax. You know, a lot of people say he died of not just uh, of asphyxiation, but a broken heart. Okay? Now, I don't know, but I, I do know this, that when that happens, when, when your heart gives out like that, there's blood and water that comes up around the heart. This is a medical thing that takes place, and so when they put that spear in his side, blood and water come out. Now, there's some spiritual things, too, because it talks about the blood and the water testify. I'm not going to get into that here right now. But it goes on, I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. Can you just see how that cross was a cry for something? To revere God. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. All you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. So I think for now I'll kind of you can go on and read the rest of that on your own. But Psalm 22 for the cross is is just powerful. So it's Psalms 22 is a prophecy. Because that's the life of Jesus and actually if you take the life of Jesus it's like a copy paste of the life of the nation of Israel Jesus is Israel Jesus is Israel I'm confident that he, this is it to summarize everything that happens to our nation happened to Jesus and yeah He's telling them, for the last time, come back to God. Come back to God. And still, we don't listen. Even if we think we do. Even if we think we do. Uh, let's go inside the city. I know it's unusual, this place, but 